ค่ะกลับมาพบกันอีกหนึ่งครั้งอีกหนึ่งช่วงนะคะช่วงนี้หลังจากที่เราเดินทางไปที่พิชชิ่งแอเรียกันนะคะก็กลับมาเสร็จสิ้นเรียบร้อยแล้วเป็นยังไงกันบ้างคะหลายๆท่านไปพิชชิ่งแอเรียกันแล้วได้อะไรกันมาบ้างเอ่ยได้รอยยิ้มนะคะแล้วก็เชื่อได้ว่าน่าจะได้ความรู้ได้ข้อมูลเพิ่มเติมนะคะในการแลกเปลี่ยนกันนั่นเองช่วงนี้ค่ะเดี๋ยวเราจะมาสรุปนะคะเกี่ยวกับพิชชิ่งค่ะซึ่งได้เกิดขึ้นไปเมื่อสักครู่ว่ามีอะไรเกิดขึ้นกันบ้างมีอะไรที่น่าสนใจกันบ้างนะคะ Welcome back ladies and gentlemen so how is about your pitching area would you like to share to everyone no okay by the way Mr. Bill, do you have some more information? Okay, so of course, may I invite Mr. Bill once again to come to the stage? Please welcome. Can you please welcome Mr. Bill? Thank you. Thank you very much. You've done an amazing job. Um, so tell me, did we catch that pitch? Did anybody see the last pitch? You, wh where were you guys? That was your homework. Oh, what have you guys been doing? Did anybody see it? I know somebody did. Well. This makes the next next bit awkward. Then, if you haven't seen the pitch, I'm I'm really disappointed um, because the pitch was really good. <laughs> it was um, I think it covered all the points, and it was a really good idea. I can't remember what it was called Skip something or other. What was it called Skip Lily Skip something? Somebody was there. What? Uh, stay, oh, stay lily. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah stay lily. It was good. And um, I'm, I, I, I don't know what to think about this, but I think it's an indication of the Thai marketplace. That when I was here last year, guess what? They pitched. It's like, um, and I think they're Malaysian. Um, but they came across really well, and, and I think um, certainly for me it was a very attractive pitch. So if you didn't see the pitch, I'll tell you what it was all about. It was a, an app that allows you to buy mystery hotel rooms um, at a huge discount, um, huge discount, and um, they have 50% uh, customer retention. Their um, what's the pain in the marketplace? The pain in the marketplace is that hotels are, on the whole, running at eighty percent occupancy. Um, she can build up another ten percent. She believes if she raises the money, um, she came across really well. I'm, 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 I can't remember her name, um, but I thought she she hit it. So for me, it was good. I was going to ask you what you thought and whether or not you'd invest, but you are very bad students. <laughs> You're the worst students I've ever met. <laughs> the so she she came across well. I really liked her. Um, have they invested their own money? Yes, they have. Have they got people that are coming on board? And um, can you add value? That's kind of up to you. Um, how scalable is it? And the beautiful thing about this is that um, she's all, she can take it to any country. So it's not a, she's got the IP in place. Um, does she own the IP? Nobody asked her. Um, so that would be a big question. Where the IP is actually placed? Um, that would, I'm sure, let's assume that they do. How big is the opportunity? It's really good. Um, can they explain it so you don't feel stupid? She did a very, very good job of explaining it so that even I understood um, what it was, um, what it was doing, and what it was about, and how they were going to scale it, and how they were going to take it on. 
um, the revenue model was very straightforward. They take a cut of the revenues that come in from the hotels. So if they're not making money, then the hotels are not making money. If the hotels are not making money, they're not making money. Um, what's not to love? They've, they've sunk most of the costs already. So most of the costs actually in the, in the um, build are um, already done. There's not much that they need to do. So it's a copy-paste when they take it to Laos. It's a copy-paste when they take it to Cambodia. It's a copy-paste when they take it to Singapore. Um, and then the horrible thing about this list is that it only needs one question. So it's, it's great, but there are so many other businesses doing similar sorts of things. Also, do people want <laughs> do people want to fall over leads and kill themselves? And do people do people want to stay at a mystery hotel? I mean one of the best things about staying in a hotel is I can look it up on TripAdvisor, I can actually see what it's all about, I can see if it's rated. I don't care if it's a 50, 60, 70 percent discount on a, a flea ridden um, um, water run, running down the walls um, sort of venture. So that there is a, a lot of competitive pressure in the marketplace. And um, I also see um, that lots of um, bookings.com and hotels.com and uh, uh, TripAdvisor, TripAdvisor I haven't seen doing mystery hotels, but I've seen the other ones all doing mystery hotels because it's good money. It's money for nothing. And that's the, you know, for, for me, that's the kind of the killer question. And I suppose, I suppose in a sense, it was a really um, good, bad example. Um, in as much as it, it's, you know, I, I think I'd, if I was going to invest my own money, I'd really want to know what they're doing um, about the competitors, about the competitors moving into the marketplace, about competitors' um, um, actions at the moment. There's nobody else doing this um, um, exactly at the moment. And one of the horrible things about companies that are making very large sums of money is that they attract competitors. Um, which is, you know, and, and, and then guess what? So what is their business? It's a trick question. It's a trick question. Their business, um, I'll, I'll answer it for the Thai audience. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'm going to get lonely and we're going to be here all night. But <laughs> their, their, their business, um, it looks like they're in the business of selling hotel rooms. They're not. They're a marketing company. That's all they are. Sorry, that's, <laughs> I don't mean all they are. Um, that's what they do. So it's, it's who's going to win. It's not the one with the cleverest um, design architecture. It's not the one with the greatest IP. It's the one that's got the biggest marketing budget that hits people who are looking for mystery hotels or happy with mystery hotels um, before the other one. And the biggest marketing budget is always going to win. Always going to win. That's the sadness. That's the sadness of it. So, whilst competition is halfway down the page, before I invested, I truly want to know what it was that we were getting into, in terms of um, in terms of how they're going to react to the competition. So, you know, it's a personal thing, but there's also questions I think from that list that you should always ask. You should always tick those questions, and you should always tick your own questions off. Any questions about the questions? <laughs> You guys are so sleepy after lunch. <laughs> That's brilliant. Imagine, imagine what a European, imagine what a French audience does. So French audiences, they go for lunch, and they drink wine. They're all asleep. It's just like, oh. You'll be pleased to hear that we're coming to the end. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and summarize what we've covered. 
and I'm really looking for, hey, listen, if, if, if you don't want to ask me questions, that's cool. If you want to come and whisper to me, we can crawl under the table and you can ask questions and I can come out and no one will know. It's like, um, or if you're completely satisfied that I've um, um, demystified the whole experience of angel investing, then that's groovy. I think um, I think I could stop, to be honest, um, with the distinction that um, it's not just about the money. Um, the whole essence of angel funding is like the travel company that looks like it's a, a, an app to give hotel rooms but is actually a marketing company. Um, Angels Den is essentially a psychological matching tool um, that looks to give companies more than the money. Angel Networks, in my humble opinion, um, should all be looking to do the same thing. The psychological match is by far and away the most important for the sustainability of the startup itself for the reasons that I hope are apparent. Does that make sense? That it's not just about giving people money? No? I'm looking at you. You're, you're, kind of, you, you're not sure? You're not sure? So I'm saying the whole essence, the, the, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get across here today, the whole point of today, is that it's not just you giving that person the money, stay lily, and then walking away. I think there's a very good chance that if, you, uh, if all the investors did that, most of the investors would lose their money. It is like life, it is like a marriage, it is like a relationship, that you get out of it what it is that you put into it. And I think what I've tried to do today is to show you what the important aspects of it are. So with a marriage, if you just keep on buying your wife um, um, beautiful dresses and rings and a car and whatever, and you give her no love, um, then sooner or later the marriage will die. <sighs> God, I know that. Um, and similarly, with uh, any sort of funding, and I think you, know, you, you, you were looking for um, VC funding or funding, um, for your for your business, I, you know, much more important than getting the funding is finding the angel that you understand, who who you like, he likes you, is is almost more important than getting um, one of Asia's richest men to invest in your business. One of the problems with super rich people, billionaires, is that on the one hand they've got lots of money. And Asians, in particular, like getting money from them. One of the problems is that because they're really rich, they've got so many things going that they can't possibly give you what you need. The mentorship and the experience and the contacts. So if you're accepting money from a billionaire, which would, you know, you go, yeah, I got money from a billionaire. It's great in the long term, uh, uh, sorry, in the short term, you've, you've succeeded, but you will probably fail. You will probably fail because it's not just about throwing money out. So there's so many VCs that have got LPs that have given them funds. There's so many funds being set up here in Thailand, in Singapore. Um, we're talking to a billion dollar fund in Singapore. It's got a billion dollars to pour into um, startups. billion US dollars. Who's got the problem? They have. They've got a huge problem. Because they've managed to convince people to give them a thousand million dollars. It's great. Wonderful. Hey, uh, what? Wow. That, 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 why is that a problem? You might think. It's a huge problem. Because what is their business? Their business is not investing into startups. Their business is investing into startups that then go on and grow and give the LPs who put the money into the fund in the first place a return. Huge difference. How are they going to find a billion dollars worth of startups in ASEAN? Well, I, <laughs> I know you could use some of it, but 
But it's not the point. It's, it's actually they've created a monster of a problem. And I don't think they, well, they do understand. So they came to us, having got the money, and they went, yeah, we've got a billion dollars. Because they're VCs as well. So what they're really good at is raising money. But can they specifically give the skills that are needed? And in Europe, VCs cannot. It might be different here. I've met lots of VCs from here, lots of VCs from Singapore who um, say that they will work on the person and turn that person into a good leader, into a different founder. They say that they will work on the business and do whatever. It, 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 it's easy to say, but you know, seriously, if, if most people in VCs are really good at Excel analysis and doing pivot tables and um, all manner of things, but do they specifically have the skills to be able to deliver to the bottom line? And time will tell. And once again, it, it's, it's natural selection. If they do, then that's fantastic. If they don't, um, then they won't get any more money next year. A billion dollars. Yeah. So, my point is that building a business and getting the finance for a business is easy, um, but staying in business is really, really hard. Anybody can get funded. In Europe, really bad companies are getting funded right here, right now, with ridiculous valuations right here, right now. Um, crowdfunding companies are very um, um, aggressive um, and they will fund anything but 80, 90 percent of their investments will die. They will die because they missed the point. What I'm trying to do is, is with my Thai audience, just trying to get some engagement, um, is, is just get across the point that it's not, you know, using your money to its best misses the point. It really, really, really has to be clever money that you're putting into it and you have to know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, then, then you're underestimating your skills. There are things that you can do to help every one of the businesses is out there. We've talked about the legals. We ran over the legals. Um, I, I, if you said that you understood everything that Lois went through, I know that you're not telling the truth. Um, but what I, need, what I need you to do, if you're going to make an investment, is to find out. Is to find out, look up the words that you don't understand, look up the phrases you don't understand, find yourself a lawyer who you truly, truly understand and love. Um, because they will be your best friend. The legals are absolutely key. And one of these things that people just go, oh, let's, that's fantastic. We've done due diligence. We've reached a valuation, and I'm very happy. Let's just go to the lawyers. And guess what? The number one thing that causes most deals where people have agreed to invest is the valuation. The number two thing is the legals. They just can't reach agreement. They can't reach agreement because, as Lois said, um, most angels haven't really don't, I mean, especially uh, um, you guys that are starting off, you haven't really seen a shareholders agreement before. You, you wouldn't have looked at it in great depth. And certainly the entrepreneur probably hasn't seen a shareholders agreement either. So it's like it's two people um, wearing masks, wearing dark glasses in the dark, trying to find each other and reach agreement. It's very difficult. I think the last two lines are kind of important as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that our friend here has um, fallen asleep in some dark corner. Um, our American taught um, VC. Um, you know, his, his paradigm, the way that he looks at the world is that you look at the numbers, yes, sure, you look at the people, but he still wants to analyze the numbers. And I, I think just on a logical sense, once again, my, my second like, you know, takeaway point is that if you do concentrate on the numbers, you're stupid because they're making up the numbers. Most startups have no, no 
idea what their three-year forecast is going to be. None. None whatsoever. For you then to add to the stupidity of it, to add to the, the nonsense, is to play their game. And, um, and there's one loser, it's you. The sadness is that the um, startup marketplace and the entrepreneurial marketplace, the um, angel marketplace, most of the textbooks, most of the courses are American-led. They're American-led. And so guess what? The um, startups that pitch, I, I've seen three pitches now, and they're all very much concentrating on their numbers, their forecast numbers, their three-year forecast numbers. They're looking at valuations based on those three-year numbers. Why? Because that's what the American model tells them to do. They don't know. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know that actually they just think, well, I'm going to pitch. So I need to have a deck. Everyone has a deck, don't they? It's like, guess what? At speed funding, when we get people to pitch, we don't allow them to use PowerPoint. <gasps> no PowerPoint. Imagine making an investment decision not based on PowerPoint. Can anybody tell me why we don't use, allow people to use PowerPoint? Because it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. On the whole, yeah. Yes, Lois. Yeah. Because if you've taken anything away from today, it's about the people. It's about the people. And what you want to do is to look them in the eye. You want to get to know the real person. You want to get to know how they fall over stands and trip over decks and whatever. It's about learning about the true person. And, and PowerPoint that fizzles up from the right and then the magic numbers and it changes color and, oh, wow, look at the font size on that. And is that the latest Apple Mac? Does the company pitching no favors? Because people are going, that is, that's, the, that's the quantum Apple Mac. Um, wow, wow, that's just, oh, look at the PowerPoint. That's so beautiful. And he hasn't used PowerPoint. He's used something else. You're falling into the trap. But guess what? It doesn't do you any favors either. Because it's distracting you away from what is actually important. Imagine your next pitch not using PowerPoint. <gasps> Imagine, imagine just going, look, forget that. Dude, just tell me. What did you do? Just tell me what you do. Imagine. Then you can go through, these, go through, you know, like, tell me about your competition. Tell me about your business model. Tell me about the metrics in your business. Tell me what the biggest problem is. What's the biggest problem that me keeps you awake every morning? What's the worst thing that could happen to one of your competitors? What's the best thing that could happen to one of your competitors? Imagine how much more knowledge you would get about the business rather than the arrogance, the American-led arrogance of them telling you what they think you need to know. It's your bloody money. Do you know what? It's my money. I want to ask you the questions I want to ask you. Don't want to give me five minutes to the end so you can rattle on for 10 minutes telling me what you think I should know. Because guess what? It leads then to the disappointment of due diligence. Where they're just telling you the, all the golden things. Here's all the golden things and hiding away all the nonsense that they hope you never see. But you need to see it all. You have to, you have to be holistic. I mean, you don't have to be. But if you're going to make an informed investment decision, you need to be able to see both sides of it, the good and the bad. And what I want to do is I want to ask you the questions. I want to go, I want to ask you the questions I want to ask. I don't care what you, shh, 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 stop talking. I want to ask you the questions. It's brave, puts the emphasis back on you again. It's lazy. Oh, that's, tr that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not true. It's not lazy. It's just the whole world is looking at it from an American perspective. And 80% failure rate. I don't want that for Thailand. I don't want that for you. What you're saying is you're accepting that 80% of the money you're going to put into deals is going to go. Every American angel site talks about 80%. 80% failure. Really? How come, how come we've got a less than 8% failure rate? And I'll tell you why. Because we understand it's not about the numbers, it's about the people. 
How do you find out by the people? You know, skip the PowerPoint. Sure, have the PowerPoint if it makes them feel comfortable. But genuinely, don't bother with the three-year analysis. How do you value the business? I genuinely, you know, I mean, if you, if you do it your own way, but that's not, that's not a bad way of coming to a compromise because, and then, then it's got a cop out at the end. And the, the cop out at the end is that you use your gut feel to blend them all together. And actually, you know, experience shows that the Bertram method isn't bad. What's your valuation? Okay. So you're, you, you've over you've overvalued your business. Um, that's great. I'll, 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 I'll give you the money. That means you you'll have greater growth um, with that. I might have lost some money in the medium term, but I can now review 20, 30, 40 more deals than I could have done. So would I invest all of the money I've got? No, I'd have an even more diversified portfolio if I was to use the Bertram method. Just ask them and, and go, if it's not ridiculous, just go, yeah, cool, okay. I know people that do it, they're very successful. They're kind of going, but, but, but guess what? They're very successful and they've been doing it for a very long time. So what they can do is look into someone's eyes and go, nah. Yeah, actually, no, no, I think, I think you're on the money. You? No, not so much. <laughs> um, but you get the gist. There's, there, is, there is no specific way. You did a lot in 20 minutes. Whoa! <laughs> and it's open to all as well. This is not, um, <clears throat> it's not about how big your bank balance is. I think our friend there who um, asked the question earlier this morning about the qualifications, the accreditation to be an angel, I think we covered it then, but the, 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 in my book, the, 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 the wallet that you need is the ability and the experience to be able to mentor. That is, what, that is the asset that you are passing across. And people often go, you know, well, that's, that's easy. But it's easy if you spent 20 years in business doing something that is, you know, so, it's, it's really easy for you. And you, you, human nature also dictates that you don't value that. That's just, everybody knows that, don't they? No, wow, that is so cool. I really need that and I can move forward with that. That is absolutely incredible. So it's not about the amount of money. It's about you being aligned with the passion of the entrepreneur. I mean, and I mean being aligned. If you're not passionate about angel investing, don't do it. Seriously. If it doesn't fill the need, if you're just doing it to make money, then certainly do not be a lead investor. You can be a passive investor. Come in and, and follow someone who's actually going to add value. But if you think, if you've looked at the full panoply of investment opportunities out there and you've decided that angel investing is your best route to being a millionaire, and that's your only reason, I don't think that's going to work. You have to be passionate about it because you have, to be, you have to be passionate about that person as well. You have to be passionate. You don't have to share the passion of the entrepreneur. That would be stupid. But you get the gist. I just read that last week. It resonated at the time. But it kind of makes the point, yeah? I mean, it's, it's, it's not about your bank balance. It's not about how much money you've got. It certainly is about the experience and the skills that you have gathered over the years. And those are the things that Thailand needs today. It's not more money. The Bank of Bangkok could invest in every startup that ever comes up. Um, um, the SEC could open up its gates to everybody and, um, and, and share the liquidity around the marketplace. Um, that's, not, that's not the point. The point is that if Thailand is going to succeed, it needs to build up its mentor base. 
it needs to build even more. All, um, the quality of the startups has really increased from the first event I came to two years ago. I mean, there's something really exciting happening in Thailand right now. You guys might be so close to it, you don't know that. Um, because I come in and come out and come in and come out and I, I don't see it for six months, I can see the step changes that are happening. I can see so much more passion in entrepreneurs. The pitching standard two years ago was awful. I mean, awful. Like, oh, I can't watch. Awful. And, you know, they didn't hit the points. They didn't hit the marks. They were completely off mark. They were just didn't know what to do. And that's fine. But the, that has been professionalized to a huge extent. Those pitches through there were awesome. I mean, they really were. Sure, we can still pick holes in them. That's not the point. The point is that the, the whole thing has to work together. It is an ecosystem. That's why it's called an eco. <laughs> but the incubators, schools, universities have to play their part. If universities are not throwing people through, if academics are just stuck in labs and are not starting to um, monetize their spin outs, if they are not able to, I mean, famously, academics are incredibly bad at making eye contact and pitching their product. They're awesome at being academic. Fantastic ideas, fantastic um, innovation, but they can't then commercialize it. And, and even if they could commercialize it, they can't get it across to a business angel who then, and who's, who's losing? Thailand's losing. Because Thailand's coming up with innovation, and I can see that innovation going to other countries. I've seen three startups this year left Thailand. Why did they leave Thailand? Because you guys never saw it. Awesome com companies. But they're not just like getting on a flight and going away, they're moving. They're taking their IP, Thailand has spent the money to educate these people. Thailand has spent the money to put them through universities. Thailand has spent the money to get their IP up to the standard where Singaporean and Hong Kong investors go, whoa! <laughs> I'll have that. It's not the Thailand that I want. I don't think it's a good Thailand. And you know, it, it, it happens all over the world. It's starting to happen in Britain where Brexit, France is now starting to compete in a huge way, giving even better tax incentives than um, the British give, which is amazing, incentivizing VCs and innovation companies to come across, incentivizing um, startups to go there. And that's the way of the world. But something is happening in Thailand and something amazing is happening in Thailand. It really is. The quality of pitches is there. The innovation that I'm seeing, some of the spin-outs I'm seeing coming out of um, the universities and schools is truly world-leading. If you guys are serious about investing, then understand what investing is about. Understand what's important. Understand what not to look at, what not to spend too much time over. Understand that looking someone in the eye and asking awkward questions, even though you're Thai, asking questions that might seem disrespectful, but in a very Thai way, is, a, is an essential part. The embracing of failure is an essential part of the ecosystem. I, I don't know how we're going to overcome that, but it's a set, I mean, it, you know, you can't mark people down that fail because, in many ways, they're succeeding. For every, you know. For every Zuckerberg there is out there, and I think if Zuckerberg was honest, he would go, look, you know, I don't know how many mistakes I've made to actually get to where I got to. Steve Jobs was horribly honest. Thomas Edison, what, failed 147 times before he came up with um, 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 his greatest invention. It's not the point. The point is that they, they went, actually, well done, you failed. Well done, you failed. Not, well, that's you. You're gone. You're dead to us now. The whole ecosystem has to work. Bringing mentors in, training mentors how to be mentors, much like you guys have um, done today. Actually training people. Now I've put my money into the, the, into the deal, what do I do now? Now you mentor, now you actually help them along. Now you sit down with them, now you encourage that relationship that you've got with them. If you don't do that, it's not the end of the world, but you probably won't see the successes that you will do if you can devote your time and your energy and your passion back at them again.
in the moment of merest optimism? I'm going to ask. Are there any questions? So why are, um, um, why are the vast majority of um, startups coming out of America? I think there's two reasons for that. I think um, Europe comes up with um, per capita, probably as many startups, but Americans are very good at promoting themselves, um, very good at um, um, supporting themselves, very good about USA, USA, and any country that's got Donald Trump um, as a president, how c what what could possibly <laughs> um, the second thing is that they have access to capital, and and uh, they have access to capital. I'm I'm, I'm putting up the eighty percent failure rate as a bad thing. Guess what? It's also a good thing. It's also a good thing because when people fail in America, it's not a bad thing. People just see it as a, yep, that's probably what's going to happen. What I'm telling you is that it doesn't have to be like that when you're investing. You can follow that model, you can follow the Carey model, the Bertram model, the, the whatever model you want, and you will lose as much money as you care to do. If you don't want to lose your money, then there are the processes which we've gone through, and I hope sort of makes sense, um, that you can do. So it's, it's something about the failure, it's something about the acceptance of failure, and it's something about how they promote um, what it is that they're doing. Um, they also have that culture, so they've got the Silicon Valley sort of accident. I, I'm, 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 so many governments want us to help them set up Silicon Valley in their country. It's not going to happen. Um, it was a coming together. It was an accidental thing. It's never, ever, ever going to appear again. Um, yeah, cool. To follow up on that, I mean, what do you think is a better way? I mean, like in the uh, YC or Google, they said fail hard and fail fast, so then you can get up and do things better in a, in a new way. And maybe the maybe that's the American way, but then then the maybe the European or the English way may be more conservative in the sense of trying to prevent it from failing. And I think in in Thailand in what but what would be the better approach, I mean if we look at I mean if you look at our context. No that, that's a, that's a nicely worded question. Um, and so, what's, what's, you asked two questions, so what's better, whatever that means. I think it depends how you look at it. If you're looking at it from the perspective of the startup, um, sure, um, 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 fail hard and fail fast, absolutely. So I've seen so many companies that um, we call them the living dead. They just kind of go like that forever, and then they're never going to go woof like that. They just sort of exist like that. Personally, I would bang them on the head and put them out of their misery and move on to something else. So very much the American model. From the perspective of the investor, I don't want to fail um, um, hard and fast. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, um, you kind of want it the other way around. You don't want to fail that often and um, sure if it's if it's going to go bad then it's going to go bad um, but but you know I think there's I think there's a compromise and the compromise really isn't that difficult but it's a paradigm shift it's a paradigm shift from through uh, from the analysis of um, of the the numbers to the analysis of the people and into their soul and their passion the reason I'm here is because Thai people get that Thai people understand that. They are good at that. They have empathy. They understand that. One of the huge problems with Thai society is that they don't publicly say that business is rubbish. 
privately, they wouldn't say it's rubbish. They just go, I think, oh yeah, it's great, yeah, carry on. And that's a bad thing for Thailand. I mean, a, a dreadful thing for Thailand. A dreadful thing for, not for Thailand, it's a dreadful thing for the startup ecosystem where all kids get a medal, where everybody's great, where everybody's catered for. Back in the real world, that is not the case. Back in the real world, people go, dude, your startup stinks, man. It's just really bad. Don't leave it like that. That would be rude and that would be cruel. You go, dude, I think your startup stinks because, bang, 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 have you thought about bang, 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 and this and that? And you know, some of that will be wrong, but at least they're moving on. And at least, then, and you can go, who are you? Go away. Or you go, wow, that's cool. Thank you. That's great. But you know, Thailand's very far away from that, isn't it? Very far away from actually being honest. No, not, sorry, not being honest. Blunt. Blunt. Yeah. Hmm? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm seeing lots of, I'm seeing lots of progression and, and, and innovation. But, but, but no, it's, it's more that rudeness. It's just that, I mean, which comes naturally to me. <laughs> I'm just a rude person. I think British people are rude. I don't think Americans are, but they're, they're very blunt. Dutch people are the worst. Dutch people have got one of the best ecosystems where they just go, um, um, what are you wearing? That looks stupid on you. I do not think you look pretty. And people go, oh, thank you for the feedback. That's great. Thank you. I think you look nice today, but you, were stu you are looking stupid. Okay. And no one's hurt. They're just going, yeah, it's just your opinion. People, people don't go, People don't go, oh my, oh my God, what? People come up to you in the street and go, why are you wearing that mask? What is wrong? It's just, oh my God, did they just say that to me? I go, wow. A wonderful place to be an entrepreneur. Everybody knows where they stand. And it's, and it's fine. You take it just as well as you, as you dish it out. That's the kind of, you know, that's a... That would be the dream. No, we're far away from that. But I think there's a way, that's why I say that the mentors are by far and away the most important part in the Thai ecosystem. And so, you know, if I was government, I would be looking to build up a training program much like this, about mentoring. You guys have to mentor as well. So one of the big sessions that we do, another, so we run six training courses over six days for our angels. You've done the whole training course in one day. So you've had six days of training in one. But the point, you know, I, I, think, I think we've kind of skipped over what do you do once you've put the money in? Like how, how do you become a mentor? And the essence of that course is that you need to leave your ego at home. You tell the person what you actually believe, not what you think is going to make you look good. You don't um, turn it into a mini-me company. It's very much about what's the best interest of the company rather than me. Difficult to do, especially for men. Especially for men of a certain age who want to show off across every culture. Difficult. So, it's, you know, it, it's... It's at the very heart of why I'm here. Um, the, your, 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 your planted question. Here's um, 10 baht. <laughs> but it is, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if we, I'm, I'm a busy guy. Um, I've got better things to do um, um, than um, um, travel halfway across the world. If I didn't think there was some potential here, and I can truly see it. I can truly see it from the entrepreneur side. I'm not seeing it from the angel side. I think there's a, there's a, there's a horrible um, mismatch, an, an unbalance unbalanced? Is that, that's not even a word. Um, there's a mismatch in terms of there's some amazing innovation and amazing, and they're making huge leaps. They're moving on. They're pitching much better. The innovation's much better. The universities are supporting to a much greater degree. They're becoming much more commercial. And we've got two angels in Thailand. It's something as well about the culture of being Thai. You don't want to stand up and go, yes, I have got lots of money. Yes, me. Hello, angel. Comes naturally to Americans to do that. Neon sign. Hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. 
And, 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 and I'm, I'm kind of joking, but I'm not. You kind of need people to stand up and go, you know, I'm willing to be an angel. And I understand what being an angel is. And I'm not just doing it for my ego. I'm not just going, oh, look, yeah, I, yeah, I invested in that. See, that's mine. Look, see, everybody in the club, that's mine. I invested in that. Not a good reason to invest. It's not a bad reason. It is one of the, 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 the secondary reasons that angels do invest. If we're, um, We tend not to tell angels that. But that is true. Oh, I'm starting. Come and ask me questions after. But listen, I, I'm, I'm, thank you very much for coming. It's been, it's been awesome to see such an amazing turnout. It really has. Um, I think even if you don't go on to invest, I hope that you can tell people who, who do have money and do have the soft skills who can mentor um, some of the lessons that you have learned here today. Um, I, my email address, and I'm really happy for each one of you to email me, is bill at angelsden.com. That's how you spell angels then. Um, yeah, and cool. And thank you guys. And, and, and I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for confirming my thoughts. Thank you very much, Mr. Bill Morrow. Call him from Mui Neng Klang Ka. All right. Lastly, before we are back home, may I invite Ladies and gentlemen, once again, to come to the stage for take the group photo together, please. And of course, may I invite Mr. Bill once again. Come on, I like it. Today, I have a photo of one photo. I want to give you a photo of the photo. Today, I have a photo of the photo. Before we get out of the photo, I want to give you a photo of the photo. I want to give you a photo. และแน่นอนนะคะวันนี้ก็ต้องขอขอบพระคุณทุกๆท่านนะคะที่ให้เกียรติสละเวลามาร่วมอบรมกับเราในวันนี้นะคะและที่ขาดไม่ได้ค่ะ Special Guest ของเรานะคะ Mr. Bill Morrow นั่นเองค่ะเรียนเชิญทุกๆท่านเลยค่ะถ่ายภาพร่วมกันเป็นที่ระลึกนะคะ <laughs> ตากล้องยังไงดีคะช่างภาพผู้หญิงอยู่ข้างล่างไหมคะหรือว่ายังไงเอ่ยอ่าผู้หญิงอยู่ด้านหน้าเวทีนะคะอ่าคุณผู้ชายเชิญด้านบนค่ะโอเคเรียนเชิญเลยค่ะอ่าอ๋อคนละสื่อค่ะพอดีมีสื่อหลายที่นะคะอขอกล้องโทรศัพท์ก่อนนะคะโอเคกล้องใหญ่นะคะ one more sir Okay. Say hey. Say hey. Okay. <laughs> one. One more. One more. Lastly. One, two, three. Hey.